Hello and welcome back to How to Build Software Without Coding. I'm Mr. Hackathon and I show you how to build software without coding. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect your internal GPT to Airtable using an API action. In this example that I'm using, what I've done, I've connected it to my Airtable database of founders. The use case is for a VC fund manager. They have a portfolio of founders, a part of their pipeline, and they want to query different things related to their pipeline and their database. What I have here, I've, I've created an example action and I might ask, what founders do we have at the pre-seed stage? And we can see now it's talking to Airtable. And you can see it's actually returned two founders at the pre-seed stage. And that is correct, even though it does say it seems there was an issue accessing specific view named pre-seed. There is no view named pre-seed, but it's based on the information. Just to show you my database before I show you how we did this. So we have an Airtable base. We have the founder's name, the starter name, starter description, and their status. Very, very simple information. Funds will have a lot more or should have a lot more information than this on, on their pipeline. And what you want to do is you're going to start off with a database. We are going to create an API uh, to be able to talk to this database. Then we're going to create a new GPT to be able to make queries and query the database with natural language. To create an API, what you're going to do is after you have your base ready, you're going to go to account and you can see API keys are deprecated. And so you're going to go to, or they're going to be deprecated soon. And what you're going to do is not use this API key, but you're going to create token. You can see the token that I just created but you're going to create a new token. You're going to give it a token name. You're going to add a scope. So the scope I've had is just read, not write. So if we do that and you're going to give it access. So I've given it access to that particular base. Then you're going to create token and you're, it's going to give you a token that you're going to want to copy and store somewhere. What you want to do following that is we need to create an open API specification for our GPT. And what I have here is an example of the prompt you need to create an open API specification. So what I have here is my prompt that I'm going to put in GPT and it's going to give me my open API specification. So we actually break some of this down for you. So I have my curl request and to get that curl request, I am going to Go to, so we're at this personal access token page. I'm going to go to web API documentation. I'm going to scroll down and find my base. And then if I scroll down, I can actually see here, this is the URL that we want to use. And then you're going to have your API token that will be a bearer token. Then what you want to do, I just want to make sure I'm giving you everything. You have your example response here. You're going to have to use that just as I have here. A part of data structure, I've given an example response. 
and I have my Kororokas here, and you don't actually need to put your bearer token here. Um, but I just put it there, so maybe you are, you might want to substitute it for yours, but I don't think it's necessary. So what we're going to do is copy that. We are going to go to ChatGPT. We're going to paste. And while that is loading, Mr. C. Okay, yeah. While that is loading, what we're going to do is I'm just going to save this one. I'm going to go back to Explore, create a new GPT, go to Configure, and I want to remove this. I want to add an act. First, I want to disable image generation and web browsing, but I'm going to add an action and then I'm going to paste my open API schema here. So if we jump back, and I paste my open API schema here. Let's just go back up. It says there's an error. And it actually didn't put the schema. So what I'm going to do, and this is typically what I do when I troubleshoot. So I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to paste that error right there and it should fix it for whatever reason it left out the servers. And you see, it's going to go ahead and fix that. And hopefully it didn't leave anything else out. Okay, and this is the last thing that it left out. So we're going to go back again. So it's going to update and make the improvement. Okay, so what we have here, we can just copy this. We can go back. And this should be fine now. So this is good. This is what we want. And for authentication, we are going to go there, just select API key. We're going to select bearer and we're going to put our API key right here. And so I, I put my API key in. And it should look something like this for you. There should be no errors. We are just going to put a privacy policy. And so what we need to do now is go back, give this a name. I'm just gonna call it founder assist, find information about founders in your portfolio or on your pipeline. And then for the instructions, I like to use the builder. And I say, you are a fund manager or a venture capital fund. Your job is to accurately 
query answer information about founders in your database and I'm going to leave it as that for now and it's probably going to ask me for more clarity Oh no, it didn't ask for any more clarity. So this is interesting. I have a feeling this is not going to be exactly as we want it um, because I don't actually think it has enough information. I'm going to say, okay, let's see. So it's changing the name, adding a profile picture, but I'm more concerned with the instructions. So I'm just going to say this profile picture is fine. I don't really care about the profile picture. Okay. So here. It's asking about specific types of questions. So I'm going to say, what are the most recent precede founders on the pipeline? What? So I gave it two questions. And now it's going to update the suggested questions. I'm going to tell it to use all information in the database. I'm going to say if the information is not included, state that. And I'm going to say where you make assumptions, let me know. I want the tone to be professional, but conversational. And I don't care about this last bit. So I'm just going to stop there and I'm going to say, tell me about our founders in our pipeline. And let's just see what it returns. So you can see it's talking to Airtable, which is what we want. That means that connection is working. And it's giving you a snapshot of the founders in your pipeline that's in our Airtable database. So we know that connection is working. I'm going to ask another question. What founders 
all working in the clean tech sector. So we haven't we haven't created a column for specifically for industry, but as we can see here, Nebula is working on sustainable energy. So we want to see does it actually understand that? So it didn't understand straight away. So it seems it says there's an issue retrieving the specific information on founders in the clean tech industry. And what it thinks, what it's trying to do is actually trying to match clean tech to the view name, but it's, it has nothing to do with the view name, but it has more to do with the information. So maybe I, I can put here, always return information about founders because that is the view name but answer the query based on the returned data And you can see it says, is now set up to provide detailed information about founders always drawn from the founders view in the database. Perfect. What clean tech founders do we have? And it's still struggling, so we're saying it seems there's an issue with a specific view, clean tech founders, but there's no view clean tech founders. I'm going to say only use the database for information. And maybe actually the question I'm asking is confusing it a little bit. What startups are working in the environment, working on environmental solutions? So here. I asked it what startups are working on environmental solutions. And it still returned everything, which is not perfect. So we probably want to continue to tweak this prompt to get as close as possible. But you can see it returned EcoFusion, it returned Nebula. And it returned Bright Edge, which are the only three in, in our database. But we would want to continue to work on this prompt to make sure it's returning the right information, basically filtering the information. But we know the connection between Airtable and RGBT is working successfully because it is bringing back the information. 